Hello, everyone. My name is Paola Gomez, and I am MuseArts Program Director. Welcome to Artist Holistic Wellness, which is part of Titus Ties to Community Winter Activation Program, a series of conversations with artists and other professionals shining the light on artists in communities' mental health. Today, we're going to explore gender-based violence in expressive parts. Before we get started, I would like to take a moment, and I invite you to take a moment as well, wherever you are tuning in from. And I will ask you to consider the lands where you are and the history of those lands. I also uh, would like to ask you to recognize the people that have lived and continue to be the stewards of that land. In my case, I acknowledge that I am currently located in the traditional indigenous territory of the Huron Wanda, the Huron Shoni, and most recently, the territory of the Mississaugas of the Credit. With this, I, win I wish to express gratitude to Mother Earth for the resources that we're using. And I would like to honor all the First Nations, Metis, and Inuit people that have lived on this land since time immemorial. Let us all reflect in what it means to respect all living creatures in what it is to act in care and support of each other. Before I turn this, the host to Veronica, I would like to also take a moment to express gratitude to our sponsor, Factor, founding assistant Canadian talent in recording, for offering the supports needed for programs such as ties to community so we could come to life and positively impact our communities. I would like to now uh, introduce uh, Veronica Gomez. Veronica is a young uh, artist facilitator, an emerging artist interested in creative writing and literature, someone who aspires to travel the world and make important connections. She currently works at Muse Arts, supporting multiple programs, including the coordination of this important online series. Veronica, welcome and thank you for all the work that you do. Thank you so much, Paula. I want to welcome everybody who has tuned into our lives. Thank you so much for being here, and of course, anybody that is what on on YouTube. Of course, as Paula mentioned, Artist Talks Holistic Wellness Series is a series that was invented to discuss, share perspectives, and wise practices on specific themes. I am so grateful to be the host today, and I'm so grateful to be here tonight. So today will be our final Artist Talk Holistic Wellness event for the month of March. Luckily, we will be continuing the series in the month of May as we are entering happening multicultural festival activations. I am very excited for today's conversation as it is a very important one. We will be diving into the topic of gender-based violence and healing through the arts. We will be exploring the ins and outs of expressive arts in the violence against women field, the major challenges witnessed in the field, and how how our significant form of healing. Remember that our chat is always open to any questions, any comments, and any concerns you may have. Please feel free to put them in the chat, and if we do have time, we'll get to them later on. So without any to introduce our amazing guest speaker, Victoria Mata. Victoria is a pi po polylingual choreographer, dance artist, and activist with a background in expressive art therapy. I will now give the space to Victoria to introduce herself a little bit further, and more about her artistic background. Thank you, Veronica. Always a pleasure to be here with Muse Arts and the amazing community. Thank you all for tuning in today. Um, yeah, I was really excited to have the invitation to be here um, to share a little bit about the world that I live in that involves both the arts and also these different journeys of healing when it comes to survivors of domestic violence. Um, like I said, my name is Victoria Mata. I 
come from a lineage of women survivors of life and women who are warriors and women who have turned to the arts to find strength and to carry them through very difficult situations. Um, so that is where I start my journey through the arts and, and expressive arts therapy. I actually kind of stumbled upon expressive arts therapy a, almost 10 years ago through a therapist that in our sessions began to use a lot of art. And I was fascinated about the surprising element of, um, of the art form in our sessions. And it wasn't until about four, five years ago that then I began to dive deeper into the actual training of expressive arts therapy um, through the Create Institute here in Toronto. Um, I enter expressive arts therapy in the world of, of therapy through the lens of a dancer and a choreographer. I am first a dancer and a choreographer. And so through that movement and that body information and my body experience, that's how I engage in this world of therapy, in particular with expressive arts therapy. Um, like Veronica mentioned, I'm also a working dancer and choreographer here in Toronto. I'm Venezuelan Canadian and I speak Spanish, English, and Spanglish, as we were just talking, <laughs> discussing before we began the conversation today. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much, Victoria, again, for sharing and, of course, being with us here tonight. Um, I want to begin the conversation by expressing our efforts to bring awareness to the topic of gender-based violence and the power of healing through the arts. I acknowledge the importance of today's conversation as we are currently facing a public health crisis who has actually forced a lot of people to stay in violent um, homes without any help, of course. I recognize that for many, for many women, this topic is is a topic of life and death. And for some, the current public health crisis has elevated their situation. But for many, this is something that's not so new to them, right? So this kind of brings me into our conversation and how expressive arts um, um, came into your life. So for many uh, self-identifying women, art has been a form of healing. Um, a medium used to express themselves and their stories. So I ask you to share a little bit of what expressive arts are and what has been your involvement in expressive arts with the violence against women field. Sure. So to give a little bit of a background around expressive arts, um, this is a bit of a byproduct. <laughs> it's a piece that I did in a, in a training. Um, we, so in expressive arts, it's, basically a journey through the arts with therapeutic lenses. So it's myself as an expressive arts therapist, I would accompany um, the other individual that's in the room with me. That's really a journey that is led by the individual. So when I'm in therapy and I'm experiencing expressive arts therapy, I am leading the journey that the expressive arts therapist is accompanying me. And I bring this up because expressive arts therapy is a little bit different than other therapeutic practices that are both at times more clinical, but also more driven by the therapist themselves. With expressive arts, the arts are the mode that bring the clarity, the questions, the transformation that where information from our subconscious or information from our lived experiences surfaces that then with that information, we as individuals can take and make changes in our lives because of what has surfaced. So it's a very hands-on, very collaborative, therapeutic journey. Um, in expressive arts therapy, we focus on the changes between using one module to the other module. So between, maybe we might start with clay and then move into song making and then maybe move into creative writing. So in that transference of the arts, 
there's really important information that happens there in what we call the aha moments um, or the gifts. And that's where we begin to question our patterns, our relationships, our um, where we're stuck, our challenges. And yeah, yes. <laughs> Amazing. Thank you so much for sharing. Um, it's for, for some of us and me included, expressive art therapy is something that I've never really touched upon. And I think it's a very interesting way um, to view therapy because we always think of the stereotypical in a room, of course, with a therapist, you know, kind of expressing our feelings, um, which is very valid. But this form of, of therapy is something very new and something that we can connect to on a deeper level, right? And I think I think what you have behind you is amazing. And it, it, ca it caught my eye right away as I was mentioning before. And I think it's, it's so beautiful. Um, but now talking about the field, I kind of want to um, highlight what were some major challenges you have witnessed in the violence against women field? Sure. Um, you mentioned some of this before, and it right now we're in the middle of a pandemic. So that ability to be able to leave the house and go to a shelter or go to your neighbor's house or go to the hospital or go to a cousin's house, that ability to just leave, physically leave the house and go into a safer space is a non-option right now for many families. So that is one of the biggest barriers living in the pandemic prevents us from mobilizing out of the situation of danger. On top of that, the shelters in Toronto in particular, I can only really speak on behalf of Toronto, but the shelters here have had to work under capacity because of the pandemic. So there's fewer staff, fewer residents, and this is just with shelters for intimate partner violence or domestic violence, or um, also known as VAW, violence against women sector. Um, so the shelters within the VAW shelters, which, which work very differently than homeless shelters, um, when the shelters aren't working at their maximum level because of the restrictions and the safety protocols that both staff and residents have to take. So there's a less, there's less spaces in shelters. There's less ability to leave the spaces of violence. And on top of that, there is a, a sense of fear also outside on the other side of the door. So it's not only the, the danger inside the home, but it's also the danger outside the home with the pandemic. On top of this, it's dealing with all the previous challenges that, that we face in this field. There are cultural challenges, there are language challenges, there are class challenges, there are accessibility challenges. And so we have seen quite an intense, quite a, a, a peak in the numbers of, um, of violence in the city. If you go onto Assaulted Women's Helpline, um, they have a, uh, a lot of information around some of these numbers. And so it's, it's multiplied. There's a census that came out uh, recently where it basically mapped a period between December and January from 2020 and from 2019 to 2020, 2020 to 2021. And it just showed immediately almost a doubled amount of phone calls that the Assaulted Women's Helpline is receiving. You know, and this might be a surprise to some individuals. In Canada, every six days, a woman is, is, is killed as a consequence of the violence that is in the home. Now, that is a, that's a very serious situation. And on top of that, now we have a situation where in a home, the abuser has even more power and control over other individuals in the home. So it's a very scary place we're in. Um, 
it is also a, a debilitating for many women living under violence in their home because of the lack of resources that they have currently. Um, when we turn to the arts, it becomes a way of accessing individuals in homes that aren't able to leave, but at least are able to cope with their situations in one way or another. So um, I'm part of different networks and different conversations and different groups. And one of the initiatives right now is finding ways of getting expressive arts into homes for individuals who are in situations of violence because all you need is a paper and a pen and then you can throw it away and then it doesn't become evidence that you're working through something. Um, some of the other challenges that we deal with in this field is especially when we try to support individuals who are in situations of violence is evidence. So we may have all the and community and professionals, we may have all the best intentions of supporting individuals who are in situations of violence, but unfortunately, even just having access to, to a resource could be, could intrigue even more violence. And so then it becomes quite dangerous for the individual. So there are a lot of challenges in this field in terms of working within the field and the arts. On the same note, though, what I have found very rewarding with this field in the arts is that we don't only deal with violence in the home, and survivors of violence in the home are not, and, and gender based violence is much greater than that. So an individual might be leaving a relationship because of the violence that is happening in that home. But that individual, that woman that is leaving, is also carrying along a whole generation of other gender-based violence that she has had to endure. So I work at a women's shelter. And when I meet the individuals, we're not only working with the immediate violence that they have just left, we're also dealing with displacement and generations of gender-based violence. So the, the topic then is much bigger and wider than just the situation that they've experienced in their home. And with expressive arts therapy, because it is based in the experience, the relationship, what happens in the moment, what I have found is that often then individuals begin to talk about the violence that they experience in many different areas of their lives that led them to make certain decisions or choices, and then they have now find themselves in a situation of violence. And it's not to put blame on the individual, absolutely not. But there is really, there's a lot of power, and I have found there's a lot of clarity and strength in understanding that the violence experienced in the home is also a consequence of a much bigger global pandemic. Mm. I, I agree with you 100%. Thank you so much for, for sharing um, your knowledge on all the major challenges faced in the field. Thank you so much, of course, for bringing up that we are currently in a public health crisis and this obviously has not helped the situation whatsoever. And the statistics that you shared with us are 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 very scary actually and um thank you so much for bringing up the fact that it doesn't it doesn't even start with that one with that one um person it goes back so many generations and it's something that we fail to see sometimes when when we hear about people um facing these challenges um so thank you so much for bringing that to light and bringing awareness around that um my next question is i know as women and as artists of course there's so many challenges that we face. Um, and of course, women 
that that go through violence there's so many inevitable challenges that they face but what is one thing that we can do as as i guess outsiders or people dealing with these challenges to bring awareness um and kind of combat them what do you sure. think we can do sure i think um one is having these type of conversations and looking at the field and looking at um the topic of gender-based violence in its com as a um, as a conversation and as a reality that is that is also always changing. So when I talk about gender-based violence, I'm also including trans women. I am also including trans men. I am including women who it's it could be verbal violence. It could also be homicide. It could be from a partner. It could be from a parent. It could be from a neighbor. It could be from a roommate. Um, it could also not necessarily be in the same immediate home, but in a home that that individual frequently visits. It could also be within a relationship that is overseas. And so, I bring this up because we grew up in a society where we, 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 we are constructed with the stereotypes that we're constructed with, and those are limiting. And so we imagine that gender-based violence looks a particular way, that domestic violence looks a particular way. I personally prefer using interpersonal violence because it, then it becomes to, it, the conversation expands, it can't, it, it, then all of a sudden we are also including other types of relationships that is not only the the intimate partner relationship um also thinking about gender thinking about class thinking about race thinking about accessibility we have to take all of these into consideration because it is going to affect each individual differently also status if somebody does not have status it is going to they're going to have way more limited access to resources than somebody with status you know there's also our indigenous sisters you know there's there's ways in which i will experience violence that will be different than somebody else and we have to think about and talk about this topic from a multi-dimensional lens that doesn't and it's not to include everybody is to understand that it impacts everybody very differently and so when i'm asked this question I, I keep coming back to that because i think we project our own stereotypes and don't even and and and, and are not even aware of it when we start defining what domestic violence looks like, what gender-based violence looks, looks like, what interpersonal violence looks like. So I would say that is the number one, is, is it's expanding our lens, but also deepening it so that we are capable, or at least we, we show up and attempt to have a conversation that where we're able to be flexible in understanding that the impact is going to look different. Amazing. Again, thank you so much for, for sharing that knowledge. I feel like I've learned so much in the, the 20 minutes that we've been here. Um, thank you so much for bringing up the fact that it's it, it, it goes beyond, right? So having this conversation today and here is a starting point. To, to kind of deepening our lenses, like you said. Um, and it's gonna affect everybody differently. So thank you so much for bringing that tonight. tonight. And, and of course, I'm reaffirming it because I think it's very important, everything that you have shared. And I kind of wanna touch back on this event's complementing topic of healing through the arts and the significance of it for our holistic well being, of course. So I'm kind of curious to learn more about your experience on using expressive arts as a healing uh, tool and how can we implement. Um, the arts in our daily lives to really help us? Sure, sure, sure. So one of the fascinating uh, 
aspects of expressive arts therapy is that although talking therapy and talking and about the work that manifests in a room, we do talk about our work and we do also engage in talking therapy and also the arts talk to for themselves. So for example, I could go into a room and ask the individual that I'm in the room with to shape a piece of clay that into a shape that could represent an aspect of how they feel in that very moment. So maybe they might come up with a piece that it's abstract and it has one part that it extends out and the other is kind of crunched in. And then we can look at that sculpture, that shaped clay and, and ask questions. What are some words that come up when we look at this piece of art in front of us? And then from that list of art of words, we can then move to writing a piece of poetry or we can move to writing prompts for freestyle writing. We can also take those words to as prompt to make a song or an offering. Um, we can also then from the, a painting, we can think about taking the lines and bringing it into the body and moving through space as if we were that sculpture and asking questions, how does it feel to move in, in the way that the sculpture is? And do I wanna stay here? Or maybe I wanna move differently. So then what does it take to move differently? And when I move differently in the space, how does it change my body? And then if I feel different, then we can go back to the table and say, okay. So if that shift felt there's something positive in that shift, how can we bring that into our daily practice? What about, how can that be a teacher? How can that be a gift? Or what message does it have? What information can we draw into our personal lives where we can apply that shift? Um, what I have found also very beautiful about expressive arts therapy with um, survivors of intimate partner violence is that because of how much the voice has to be restricted as survivor of intimate partner violence, that it is the voice that is very scary to come out, to let, allow to expand. And so painting, drawing, writing, singing, music, movement, they can become great channels and ways in which to express without having to use the voice because often the voice is really scary. It's a place that is quickly judged or a place that then if, if, a, if the woman speaks and then there's very serious consequences to that. So with expressive arts therapy, I found that I can travel to so many different places with individuals, both into their childhood, into the future, reimagine the future, or also allow spaces where we can celebrate and acknowledge um, elements about their current life that they really like and elements about their lives that they don't want to lose. And so how do we honor that? How do we create a ritual to honor the aspects of that individual that they want to hold on to. Um, and going back to what I said at the beginning, that it is very individual based, so client based for a lack of, of to put a bit of a uh, clinical term. So it is the client. We in expressive arts therapy, we call the client the expert. expert. They are the experts in their own lives. So they know the best. So they're the ones that are going to drive that healing bus. They're the ones who are going to make that drawing that has not existed before. And they're the ones who are going to draw information, allow for surface of messages to come through. And I am there to support, to hold space, to witness, that witnessing is really important. And then also to ask questions and to through curiosity, 
engage in new worlds. So take a piece of art and take it to something else. And there's a beautiful surprise element to this field that I find is both healing as well as empowering. Um, I'm in, I'm in awe. I really am. I'm in awe to hear that. I didn't, I wasn't aware. I don't think I was aware of so many root like rounds you can go with expressive arts. You were, you know, you were describing the singing, the dancing, the movement, or even the visual arts, right? I, I didn't know there were so many ways to do so. Um, and I'm so, I'm so glad you brought this to light because everything you were saying, I was like, I want to, I want to, I want to do this. I want to be an, an art therapist now. This, this sounds amazing. Um, and I can see how helpful this can be for many individuals. And I see the significance of this. And I want to thank you uh, on behalf of everybody for the work that you do, because I know it's extremely powerful. If I'm, if I'm touched, I can't imagine the, the person sitting in the room with you at that time so thank you so much for that I wanted to kind of ask is there any is there any prompts or is there any activities that us at home we can be doing at this difficult times um, any examples of these activities yeah so I do have a proposal um, and Veronica you will have to do it too no you don't have to I invite you. I'm, I'm down. I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> uh, barely, and I will do it as well so that we, I mean, uh, Veronica, if you're open to it, then both you and I can share our work, what we do. And then therefore, um, yeah, we can maybe just you and I have a little bit of a conversation about it. And that that can be a bit of an example, um, if that's OK with you. <laughs> um, Amazing. Yeah. For those folks who are at home, um, I invite you to grab a pen or or uh, pencil, um, if you happen to have oil pastels or markers, so something that has a little bit more of a variety, I would say grab a color that you're drawn to right now in this moment without thinking too much about it, okay? And then I invite you to grab a piece of paper. It can be a notebook, uh, it can be a piece of paper, it doesn't matter the color. If you do happen to have access to different colored paper, then also think about grab a color that you're drawn to. There's a lot of information, a lot of theory, and a lot of research around color therapy. Um, oh, we won't go there right now. Um, And um, so I like you to just before starting, um, just put your feet on the ground and just for a moment, feel the back of your back. Just see if you can kind of relax it and um, feel as though your scapula, your shoulders are melting down your back. So that you kind of walk around like this a lot. Just thinking, and not also thinking like, oh, I have to not be tight. No, just thinking about like, just let your shoulders roll back. It's like almost like they waterfall down the back. Feel your feet on the ground. You can have your eyes closed or open. If having your eyes closed does not feel so great, you can also look away. But that, try to look away from the camera. I'm going to keep looking at the screen, but you'll just look away from the screen for a moment. Take a moment to just breathe without changing anything. Just take a moment to breathe. Notice where the breath sits in the body. Notice if there's any aches, parts of you that don't feel all that great. Maybe there are parts of you that feel, that feel good. It's okay to connect to the parts of us that feel good. Just 
And then I'd like to invite you to take both of your hands, it doesn't matter what order, just place them at the very top of your stomach, also known as the diaphragm. Just a fun fact, the diaphragm is responsible for protecting all of our vital organs. So it's like always like this, the little warrior inside of us, keeping us alive. Sometimes it's really stressed out. So we're gonna do a little bit of, hey, relax that frame for a moment. So you're gonna take your hands and place them above your stomach. And you're going to, as you breathe, you're going to want to push your hand outside, and then let it fall. Just experience how the tissues of the stomach expand, how they fall right back. Thinking about not breathing from here so much, but bringing it down to your hands. Almost like the diaphragm wants to push out of your body into the hands, and then it deflates. Maybe three more breaths. And let that go. And breathe again. Last time. Just let that go. And then maybe shake out your hands. Just let it go. So. You're gonna take, sit in front of your paper and your writing utensil, and you're gonna hold it in your, in your less dominant hand. So I write with my right hand, so I'm gonna use my less dominant hand. And again, we can do this with our eyes closed or with our eyes open. But if you have your eyes open, do not look at the piece of paper. There's two things. One is don't look at the piece of paper. And the other is never start, stop drawing. So continue drawing, even if you, for, you need to go to another part of the piece of paper, you just continue drawing and then come right back. Try not to lift the piece of the writing utensil off the page, just keep it and just trust there's no right or wrong. And we're just going to trust that what needs to come up and what needs to manifest is what's going to manifest. So let's begin. This is gonna take maybe a minute or two, it's gonna be short. And I'm gonna guide you through this, although you can also do this, this exercise can be done without somebody guiding and you can just do it on your own. So close your eyes or look away from the, the paper. I'm gonna keep my eyes open. And I'd like you to follow the outline of your body with your writing utensil. So we're going to begin with our left foot and you're literally going to imagine that your writing utensil is following the outline of your body. So place your writing utensil somewhere on the page that's not the middle of one of the extremities. And begin to outline your big toe. And then you're gonna proceed to your other toes. And then the outer edge of your foot to your ankle, to your leg, your knee, 
You can maybe go around the knee if you like. Outside of your leg and your hip. To the side of your body, to your armpit. You're gonna go down the arm and your elbow. Maybe you circle around the elbow. Down to your hands, your thumb. And proceed to the other fingers. Now you're going to continue on your own. So you're going to continue going up your arm, round your shoulder, up your neck. Now I'm going to stop talking and you're going to continue drawing the outline of yourself your hair, your eyes, your face. But in silence, you connecting with your body. There's no right or wrong. Trust the lines. Avoid looking at the paper. If you do, it's fine. Just see what happens if you don't look at the paper. Continue along outlining the rest of your body. Imagining that that pen is outlining We're going to take 10 more seconds. Do 30 more seconds. Just think about coming to an end shortly. Continue your line. And place down your Utensil, but don't open your eyes or don't look back at the page yet. Just notice how your body feels. Just notice what the experience was like, nothing else. Try not to look yet. If you've looked, it's okay, but try not to. Just listen to what that experience was like. And with your next breath, open your eyes or turn your face and look at the art in front of you. So Veronica, I will invite you to come back. Okay, wow, that was <laughs> an experience, take definitely. Take it in for a moment. Just take in this, this, this image in front of you, okay? And before we show our images, I'd like you to name this character in front of you. Give it a name and write it on, on there somewhere. So for all of you also listening, give it a name. It can be a name or it can be a short phrase or it can be a word. Name can be anything. What stands out for you about this image in one or two words? We're gonna give it a title.
Okay. All right. Who's gonna go first? You or I? <laughs> what would you prefer? <laughs> okay, let's do rock, paper, scissors. Okay. Okay. Rock, rock paper, scissors. Ah! Uh, okay, didn't determine who goes who. Okay, let's do it again, and okay. then losers goes first. Okay. Okay. Ready? Yeah. Rock, rock paper, paper, scissors. scissors. Oh no! Uh, <laughs> rock, paper, scissors. scissors. <laughs> or else we're okay. six. We're six. <laughs> rock, rock, paper, scissors. Okay, you go. I go first. Okay, so this is my drawing. Wow. Yeah, it's. I, I have no words. Um, so I chose the yellow paper and the the pencil that I was writing with was a purple one. And I named it Exper. I think it's Exper. Yeah. Uh, I kind of tried to to combine new experience together. So Nexper is what I came up with. And that Wow. Drawing. <laughs> wow. Yeah, it's 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 great um and the way that you mentioned that my body felt after i was done it's kind of like i went through all of it i, I went through my whole body i don't i don't know what it was but it it was definitely an experience and something that that was very new to me and i'm so grateful for having done this um your turn. <laughs> so this is mine wow And I called it one step. One foot is, yeah, it's one foot. Kind of looking down at the one foot. So from here, which we won't, we won't do, but from here we could go so many directions. You know, I could look at this image and say, you know, I could ask is like, why is this character looking down at only one foot? Is there something that I can relate to about this? Or I could also invite if you and I were in a room together, I would invite you to like, would you like to walk like this character? And then after we walk around with that character, is there something that's coming up for us? Is, are we noticing anything? Is there is there information that could be important to us? Um, or similarly, show me yours again. Yeah, I'm fascinated with these lines up and down. You know, I think I would be drawn to that, really curious to that. So maybe we'd spend some time understanding that or describing it, or maybe I would ask you, you know, like, what, what are these lines about? Is there something that resonates with you about these lines? Um, you know, or even ask you what what stands out for you about your own drawing, and then take it from there, and then we can sculpt, and then we can write, and then we can paint, and then we can sing, and um, and it can last an hour, and then we can also do it over multiple. One painting can be material for many weeks. Um, so yeah, this is um, and folks were. Uh, listening, um, I invite you to send into Muse Arts your drawings if you want to share with us um, with your names. Don't, um, I would say don't write your personal name on it in case they all, they, um, okay, two things, and I'm stepping in for Muse Arts, please. <laughs> um, if you send in your drawing, if you share your drawing with us, two things, please clarify if we can share it publicly or not. And it's okay if we cannot, if it's just for our eyes only, that it is completely okay. Two, um, don't put your name on it, um, but do put the, the, the name of the character. Um, yeah, I'm so curious to, to uh, witness other folks drawing. So that's a little bit, that's a little window into this world. It's, it's very body. It's what we call 
low, imp uh, low impact and high sensibility. So it's um, low technique. It doesn't require a lot of skills, low skills, low skills and high sensibility. So it doesn't take, we don't have to be artists. We don't have to be um, artistic in order to do this. And then from this activity, we would draw so much information. So also the how we engage in the arts is very much um, doesn't acquire a lot of skills, but the impact of the sensibility is quite high. Amazing. Again, I want to say I'm so thankful to have <laughs> formed a part of this tonight. And like you said, um, this technique and this form of art is so accessible to anybody. It's just having a piece of paper and a pen and it can make the the world of difference and and like I experienced it today I feel I feel I feel so light I don't know what it is you really left me initiated like I want to do more I want to learn more and I think that's that's the magic of this conversation today and that's the magic of really opening yourself up right so to kind of conclude because our time is running out unfortunately I wish I could stay here forever like I said I'm, I'm so I'm so intrigued but I kind of want to touch back on to um of course the importance of today's topic, which was bringing awareness and educating ourselves on, of course, gender-based violence and healing um, through art forms. So as, as a last question, I wanna ask you, what can we do as artists and community members? Um, what can we do to bring awareness and really educate ourselves on this topic of, of today? Sure, I mean, I think if we, uh, there's endless amount of things that we can do. One is reach out to the people that we love and that we care about. Um, you know, as we're seeing in the news right now with all the Asian elder hate crimes, that's really prominent right now. So how do we, how can we reach out to the folks that we care that are part of those communities? Um, can we show up in a, in a way? Earlier today, I was having a conversation with some of my close friends of just like, you know what, let's make a banner. Like, let's make something public and visual and and some it may seem at times that it's not very it's not a big act of activism but it is it is solidarity has so many um looks has so many shapes and forms so i think it's one listening i think just i encourage ourselves i encourage myself to continue to listen um you know but there's so many I think gender-based violence, in particular to the topic today of violence in the home, is it's a topic that is really scary for community and communities because it often is so close to us. And if it's not in our own home, it is in the home next door, and it is not in the door next, the home next door. We know that it was in the home of other members of our families. So, but often it is not spoken about because of the shame that is attached to it. The shame of, of, of violence and being a survivor. So finding ways of, of engaging in conversations, creating platforms like this, I would say is working towards healing and towards educating ourselves and supporting ourselves. Um, and encouraging folks to to the arts. The arts are a powerful medium for us to find refuge in, for us to find wisdom in, for us to find clarity. Um, and the arts are there to support us and they're there as a companion and they're also there as great wisdom. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's, I just have gratitude for you and, and gratitude for, for, for the art form and, and for everything talked about today. Like you said, the first step is really opening the space for conversations and, and listening, really being here to listen. I was in awe in everything you were saying today. And I was, I really took the time to, to sit back. You can even see it on the live stream. I was just, I was just listening. I was just nodding to everything you were saying because I was taking everything in. And I, I'm pretty sure everybody that was on the live today 
really did the same. So thank you so much. You. So of course, our event has come to an end. And I want to firstly thank Paola, the program director, for creating the space, um, for knowledge sharing, and of course, for, for really change. So thank you so much. Of course, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you to our amazing guest speaker, Victoria, for sharing all, all your knowledge, all your wisdom and being so vulnerable and open with us today it was it was amazing thank you so much thank and you. of course to oh, everybody thank you. <laughs> of course and 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 uh, thank you to everybody that tuned in today it was an amazing session and of course today is our last session of the march of of, of the of the month of march so i think it was an amazing ending it was it really tied everything together and and I just, I'm so grateful. So thank you so much for everybody that tuned in. And a reminder that we are continuing our series every Tuesday in the, May, in the month of May um, as part of Happening Multicultural Festival, which I'm very excited about. And I think everybody should be as well. So we'll see you in May. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a lovely evening. Stay safe out there. <laughs>